Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Come take a seat and join me for today's children's sermon. We are in the green season, the Sundays after Pentecost, when we think about how we grow in our love and faith in Jesus. In today's gospel, we hear Jesus ask the question, who do you say I am? And so I ask you the same question, who is Jesus? Hmm, Jesus came as a teeny tiny baby and he grew up to do wonderful things. He was a teacher and a preacher. He healed people. He helped the poor and those in need. He shared God's love wherever he went. And he came to save us. Jesus is the Messiah. He came to save the world and give us new life. And who are you? You are a baptized child of God. And as a child of God, it's your job to share love in the world and teach people about Jesus and all the wonderful things that he did. Let's say a prayer, friends. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we give you thanks for Christ, our Savior, who came to save us, who came to give us new life, who shows us how to share love in the world. Be with us as we go out sharing love and hope and joy in the world every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first lesson is written in the 51st chapter of Isaiah, beginning at the first verse. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath for the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever and my deliverance will never be ended. Receive what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is written in the 12th chapter of Romans, beginning at the first verse. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher and teaching, the exhorter and exhortation, the giver and generosity, the leader and diligence, the compassionate and cheerfulness. Receive what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A pastor colleague of mine was hosting some friends from out of town. And as Sunday neared, one friend said to my colleague, I'd like to come hear you preach. Now, that friend was a devout Jew, and my colleague got quiet for a moment. There was this awkward pause, and then he muttered, Well, I'll be preaching about Jesus. So, said his friend. My colleague replied, Well, I'm afraid of saying something that would offend you. His friend returned with this. I'd be very disappointed in you if you didn't preach about Jesus. Honestly, I don't know why it is that my Christian friends are so afraid of talking about Jesus with me. I'm not afraid about talking about my faith with you. I share this story to help you know that even pastors sometimes have a hard time talking about Jesus. It seems that sometimes, or maybe even we could say often, we as Christians don't want to talk about Jesus. Even now, as I preach to you this first time in this online format, I'm nervous because this sermon is decidedly about Jesus and inviting us all and helping us all to name who Jesus is. 
I'm worried that this is going to be too Jesus-y. And then I laugh at myself because preaching about Jesus is my calling. You have called me here to do just this. I moved across the country to come here to preach about Jesus, to talk about who Jesus is, and to learn from you who Jesus is even more. And yet, I still feel nervous about being too Jesus-y. But Simon Peter, he has no such problem. Jesus asks the disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter boldly proclaims, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. The Messiah, the anointed one, the one they'd been waiting for, the one set apart for a purpose. The son of God, a bold statement. What does it mean to be the son of God? It's in this way that Jesus is unique. There's this intimate connection between Jesus and God. And not just the Son of God, but the Son of the living God, which is my favorite part. I love that God is living, dynamic, active, moving, and working. You are the Messiah the son of the living God, Peter says. And Peter's boldness is commended. Jesus says to him, blessed are you. My father in heaven has revealed this to you. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. In other words, Jesus says, good answer. But I wonder, I wonder what you would say if someone asked you who Jesus was. What would you say? If you're feeling a bit of panic and you're unsure of what to say, know that you are not alone. I would feel those things too. I do feel those things too. And I do this for a living. When the question comes, in whatever form it does, like, why do you go to church? Or simply that awkward pause that comes after someone finds out that you do go to church. When that pause or that question comes, we aren't sure what to say. I think that happens for many reasons. We're afraid that we don't have the right answer. We're afraid that we will offend someone. But also, I think it comes because we don't have practice. So we're going to take some time to practice, to workshop this question. Who do you say that Jesus is? Let's warm up. Who do you say that you are? In one or two sentences, share who you are. You could open up an app on your phone. You could find a pen and paper and write it out. The beauty of watching online is that you can pause this and take time to write out your answers. Feel free to do that just as long as you come back because we're just getting started. Here's what I came up with for who I am. I am first and foremost a beloved child of God. One who wants you to know that you are a beloved child of God too. I'm a follower of Jesus, a listener of the Holy Spirit, a celebrator of God's beautiful creation, a wife, a mom, a sister, a daughter, a friend, a pastor. Friends, do you know what would make my day? If you would send me your answer, 
I'm hoping to get to know all of you. So if you get a chance, send me an email at pastor at mtolivelutheranchurch.org telling me who you are. Okay, so we're continuing along and here's the next step in our workshop. How would you describe someone close to you? Someone you love in one or two sentences. Again, feel free to pause the video to write out your answer. I decided to talk about my husband, which is helpful as a way to introduce you to my family. Here's what I wrote. David is a kind, gentle heart, a dad with amazing patience, a partner who laughs with me and listens deeply, a deacon in the ELCA who has a heart for teaching children and equipping people for growing in faith. Now, here we are at the hard part. Who do you say that Jesus is? Maybe your statement will include words like friend, or shepherd, or guardian, prophet, priest, king, lord, my life, my way, my end. These are all words and descriptors of Jesus we'll sing in a moment in our hymn of the day. Or maybe you'll use words like savior, or guide, or peace or hope. Who do you say that Jesus is? Again, feel free to pause the video to write your answer. Here's my answer. Jesus is my way, my truth, my life. God with us, Emmanuel who goes to the darkest places, even death on a cross, to bring life and light and love and resurrection. You know, I think it's important to practice saying who we think Jesus is out loud. And so though we aren't all in the same place and that I won't hear what you say, though if you want to send it my way when you send me information about who you are, I would love that. But what I want us to do is I want us all to say at the same time what we came up with in our statement about who Jesus is. Yes, I'm asking you to be that person who talks to your screen. And so on the count of three, we're going to all say whatever it is we wrote. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus is my way, my truth, and my life. God with us, Emmanuel, who goes to the darkest of places, even death on a cross, to bring life and light and love and resurrection. Friends, we are here today because Jesus matters to us. And how we talk about Jesus communicates how Jesus matters to us. And also how Jesus could matter to someone else. Here is my hope. I hope that the next time someone asks you who do you say that Jesus is, that you might have the courage to speak your truth, to share, to share who Jesus is for you and the difference that Jesus makes in your life. God, give us the courage. God, give us the words. In Jesus' name, amen.
let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers of intercession, after each prayer petition, I will say, God in your mercy, and please respond with, receive our prayer. God of Sarah and Abraham, inspire your church to pursue righteousness in its ministries. Equip us to share your compassion that unites us in the one family of faith. God in your mercy, receive our prayer. Remind us that in the beginning of creation, you knit together a world meant for harmony. Protect and restore the wasted places to joy and gladness. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Stern leaders of nations and towns, militaries and courts to respond to your teaching. Let your call for justice reach all people and bring deliverance where there is oppression. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Show your steadfast love and faithfulness to those in despair. Increase their strength. Care for all who feel low, keep safe any in the midst of trouble, and protect the vulnerable people from harm, especially those we name silently or aloud. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Encourage those who offer their gifts and talents to serve your church. Energize this congregation's leaders, musicians, teachers, greeters, and administrators, so they may transform the sharing of your grace. We especially pray for our ministries of administration, leadership, and finances. For the preschool ministry, the ministries of being caring partners for those who are sick, those who are experiencing food insecurity, and those who are houseless. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of all saints, death is overcome in Christ's resurrection. We rejoice with the faithful departed. Sustain us in hope until we come at last to your heavenly home God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. No, my heart extends peace to you this day. A few announcements. The first is that Mount Olive has dedicated $1,000 to go to ELCA disaster response to help those suffering from the devastating wildfires in Maui. They've also designated $1,000 to come uh, in matching funds. So if you give money, Mount Olive will give matching money for that. So if we all give in great generous ways, we can give up to $3,000 from this congregation to help those in need. I also do want to announce that I'd love to meet with you. If you're interested in having a Zoom conversation or a phone call or even meeting in person, I would love uh, to connect. I'm really trying to get to know this community. With those announcements, we'll continue with worship.
praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you have called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call upon you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.